Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live, space right here on Behance for you to make friends, get feedback, and watch professional designers do what they do live. Um, if you're tuning in for the first time, thanks for being here with us. This week, we are celebrating UI and UX design with Adobe XD, and I have the pleasure of hosting Evan Place here. Uh, my name's Gus, by the way. Uh, Evan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so yesterday we started um, with like a trick or treat app, uh, just kind of wireframing things out. Um, but today should be uh, a little bit more fun as we get into uh, designing a little bit more and uh, just kind of fleshing out some of those wireframes. So yeah. yeah, yeah, we're excited to see your designs from yesterday sort of come to life today. Um, and if you missed the first stream, don't worry. Uh, we'll we'll rehash some stuff today. But you can also always catch the replay on the replay tab above the player. Uh, which is very convenient. Um, also, just really quickly, let's go over the schedule for today. Uh, we were just live a second ago with Howard Pinsky and Peter Del Tondo, who are working on an app for Rosanna Pansino, a very famous cool. YouTuber. Um, now we're live right now with Evan, who's working on a trick-or-treat app that's been inspired by Waze. And then later today, right after us, Mike Kochenberger and Howard are going to be live again, well, Howard for a second time, and he's actually going to design an, an Alexa app, a voice-controlled app in XD using one of the new features that was just announced at Adobe Max uh, just last week. So you'll want to stick around for that. Um, also, just so you know, in about 30 minutes, stay tuned, stay active in chat on behance.net slash live. You could win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule which is the fastest and easiest way to buy custom stickers online. They're our good friends, and they hooked us up with some codes, and we want to share them with all of you. Who doesn't love stickers? Yeah, exactly, right? And then we'll also be doing a challenge today. Um, the challenge is to actually create a fast food ordering app using Adobe XD. Uh, yesterday was one screen, but today we're challenging you to something a little bit more difficult uh, to actually design and prototype an experience. Uh, bonus points if you play with overlays, uh, fixed elements, or even add some auto animation into the mix. So if you're still working, uh, continue to work. If you're just learning about it, you have plenty of time to still share with us. Up in the ante a little bit with that. Yeah. Cool. That'll be fun to see. So now we got the details out of the way, let's jump into the design. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, we had uh, a bunch of wireframing that we did yesterday. I'll just quickly kind of explain that again. So we just had a... Uh, I should explain the app first. So the app it, app idea is um, inspired by Waze and just you know that social aspect of of you know just using a map and uh, just thought it would be cool. Like growing up, you always wanted the full size candy bars or the you know you knew what houses to go to. Um, and so I just thought it'd be cool if there's like an app that that could kind of create more of an experience around that. Mm -hmm. um, so we are focusing just on the homeowner side of this. Uh, just for the sake of, of progress and, and time. Um, so we've got a welcome screen, uh, then creating an account and what that looks like for a homeowner, uh, a couple uh, forms to fill out, and then some onboarding screens, a profile screen, uh, and then editing the profile. So we've got a lot of screens to try to get through. Um, cool. So we will uh, we'll try to, yeah, we'll try to get through there. Sweet. So we're just going to start from the beginning and work on yeah, that? Yeah, yep. Nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the, the welcome screen, I'm going to leave. Um, I'll start it, but I'm not going to get too carried away with it just because uh, we'll play around a little bit more with that later. So I'm just going to throw a background in. We have a lot of friends in chat saying hi. It's awesome to see you all. Jan Eric, my good friend for a long time. Anel, Afroja, Matias, Munir. Uh, we, of course, have Tim and Val in chat, our trusty mods and good friends. Uh, Bojana, nice to see you. Tatiana, Dana Pride. We met Dana last week at Max. Oh, cool. It was cool. really special. She, said, she, she came by and said hi to us at the booth. Awesome. So that was really nice. Thanks, thanks for coming by and saying hi. Nice to see you, Jordan. Thanks for the compliment on my shirt. <laughs> we'll talk about fishing at some point. Oh, today. yeah. I think we have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard exciting. Max was pretty fun. I didn't. I wasn't able to go this past week, but it sounded like there's a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, it was neat. I think what was really special about it is it's a, just a collection of all of, a, in a lot of ways, our Adobe Live community. A lot of our viewers and a lot of the people that we've had on as sure. guests were all in one place at the same time, and it was just really exciting to see everyone in person and kind of, you know, experience the our virtual network in reality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
yeah, it's always good when you can can shake hands and, and yeah, meet yeah. in person. Right. Because you see it, you see these avatars, right, and the names, and you know everyone's work, but actually talking to them is yeah, it's quite special. Yep, definitely. Joda, thanks for tuning in from Chile. Awesome to see you. Munir says Gus Boss is a cooler name. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Munir. Hey, Chris. Oh, cool. Met him through uh, Creative South, so awesome. in a Slack group together. Haven't actually met in person, but I. If I remember right, he lives in Winnipeg, so uh, we commiserate with uh, winter weather yeah. quite a bit. Uh, I imagine since I'm from Minnesota. So, yeah, Evan was just telling me right before we went live that um, during the winter they ice fish in Minnesota, and the ice gets so thick that they can put a snowplow on the lake. Yeah. So. Yeah, people still think you're crazy sometimes <laughs> for doing that, but it's not. It's not as dangerous as it sounds. It's really not. Uh, Chris, Christoph, uh, you have until right before the end of the last stream today to submit the challenge. So that would be 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. If you share it during our segment, we would love to review it. Um, that will be submitted sometime in the next hour and a half. Uh, we'll be able to get to that. Um, also, if you're having trouble getting started or you're just getting started with UI UX design, uh, on the challenge tab, there's actually a tutorial to a video that Howard um, created on Monday this week where he designed uh, the app for the challenge today. So it was kind of a spoiler on Monday. And typically, if you tune in for the Getting Started streams, you'll kind of get a little bit of a sneak peek on what one of the challenges will be. So you can watch that video and learn how Howard designed his app and then Im implement it on your own designs. Cool. Okay. Let's get into it. Yeah, and I think we're... Uh we're still semi unsure of what the app name will be. So if you've got ideas, feel free to, to throw them at us. But for now, I think my favorite has been Tricker just because it's simple and clean. So for the time being, I'm that just was a put Kathleen it there. Illustrated original. So if someone has a better Good name stuff. than Tricker, throw your hat into the mix. Oh, I saw, what's that? Can you buy Creative Styles clothing anywhere? Mm, I think they're referring to my sweatshirt. Yeah. Uh, this is actually just part of the swag that they gave away for uh, the Creative South Conference. Uh, I don't know if they, I can't remember if they have a store or anything like that. I know there was talk about it once. Um, if it exists, I have a feeling Tim's going to find it on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Tim's a... Tim is sort of connected, like his brain is connected to the internet. <laughs> so he's wired, hardwired? Yeah. yeah, he's hardwired in. Nice. Hi, Asraful. Thanks for being here. Mark says, it's the most comfortable hoodie. It is, it is, it's yeah. A statement. I have to, yeah, I have to seal it from my wife a lot of times, <laughs> so. That's great. Cool. So this would be like the the initial screen. Yeah, just see. a splash screen, and and I might we'll we'll could probably come back and visit this more if we have more time, mm -hmm. um, and maybe play around with some background images or illustrations to add to it. But for now, um, I want to make sure that we get to some of these other screens. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna leave that one in that state for now. Cool. I like the color scheme a lot. It's yeah. Very Halloween, but it's not too. Yeah, Probably yeah, I debate it. So, yeah, a lot of the colors, I, I kind of tried to have them picked out ahead of time just to avoid, you know, I guess just for the sake of time. But, you know, like I, I was tempted to try to go orange, um, but orange just doesn't always lend itself real real well to, to UI things. And um, the purple just kind of seems, well, who doesn't love purple right now? I think that's super popular color one. But Did, did um, you use the Pantone? Color of the year, purple, ultraviolet. I don't, not intentionally if I did. It looks close, I think. Not intentionally if I did. It's the color of the year. The new millennial pink. Okay, so we've got the click create account, and then we've got two options. Ghost text for right yep. now. Yep, yep part of the theme. Yeah, Dana did indeed get her picture taken with me and Kathleen and Michael. Wow, the trio. It's pretty cool. Yeah, if you have the ability next year to go, we'd love to come say hi to you. Or if you are 
near San Francisco um, or at one of the other conventions that we usually attend throughout the year, please come say hi to us. It's always a treat to meet you in person. So did you have a favorite part to Adobe Max? I mean, other than, mm. than meeting everybody? I really feel like that that was my favorite part, hands down. Uh, we, we streamed the whole week, so if you're watching right now, we did this from Adobe Max, and there's actually a replay that you can find on the Replays tab uh, where we interviewed and got kind of first takes on the recent updates for all the various programs and also just allowed people to create live from the conference floor. Cool. And I think that was just kind of fun, like fun to be in the mix, you know, like being busy and saying hi to people that we had seen maybe a year ago or even longer. Um, I just thought that was kind of special. Maybe I'm more people-centric when it comes to Max, but <laughs> yeah. it was about the people for me. Cool. Do you have a favorite part about Creative South when you attend? Uh, I mean, it sounds generic, but yeah, just the people, like, it's just fun to be able to, you know, like I said, shake hands and, and you know, meet in person and actually get to hang out and, um, like, so those have great talks at Creative South, but mm -hmm. like a lot of the time is just spent like having meals together and just like having those conversations. Um, and I'm not an extrovert by nature, um, but meeting people and talking to people at Creative South, just, I don't know, it seems really easy. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's just the people or if it's the conference, but. Um, I feel like conferences in some ways are a little like um, going to like a camp, like a summer camp. Or, yeah. Or it's like yeah. the first day of school where like, you don't really, nobody really knows everybody there. And so people are like more willing to just kind of be open and yeah. give a random person a shot at a conversation. So it's kind of fun. You're all in it together and experiencing it. I find that the vibe there is, is very welcoming. Yeah. So here we're gonna have the two buttons. Um, one for the homeowner and then one for the trick-or-treater. We're just, again, gonna focus on the homeowner. But rather than just saying homeowner, I thought it might be fun to say treat giver and treat taker. Nice. Um, we could change that, but or think... treater and tricker. Oh, <laughs> I like that. That's we don't simpler. have to do it. But... No, no, I like that. <laughs> treater and tricker. Yep. <laughs> well, that implies they need to pull a prank of some sort. All right, Dagny has a question. I'm new to this. Are there templates or plugins available to add on a home screen? so not to have to redesign every time. Um, yeah, so um, a lot of the, so I, I only started in UI UX like two years ago or so. Um, and so a lot of it just starting out was just looking at things and trying to recreate a lot of it. Um, but there are definitely like UI kits that kind of help provide a lot of um, just kind of that structure and, and, mm -hmm. and getting started and um, I think that's probably a good place to start. Uh, you can kind of pull elements out mm -hmm. of different UI kits, piece them together, and then um, make changes to them. Um, yeah, especially if you're using XD for the first time, there's a there's the option to get UI kits from the file menu, and in that you can actually find um, a wireframes kit that lives on Behance. Um, you can also get Apple and I like iOS and Windows design resources, um, but the wireframes kits pretty cool because it has like home pages and some components built into it that if you don't have that knack for design yet or you don't have the experience you can use something that has solid design principles and then build off of it and add your own flair so yeah this could be a really cool way for you to get started yeah this looks really awesome looks like there's a lot there too yeah it's pretty large it has like several kind of workflows and artboards and also a bunch of icons and different assets Very that cool. you might need for a mock-up and that's oh, cool. totally free. You can just download it and use it in XD. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this yesterday too with Nucleo is, yeah, I just kind of go to my go-to for icons and illustrations. I want to add a couple icons just to further um, clarify what these two are for. Um, so I'm just gonna look through for something I like. Is there, do you have the ability to like filter and search for icons too? 
Oh, that's what you Yeah, can yeah, so you can search up here. Uh, you can search by sizes. A lot of times I'll just drag it in and then resize it afterwards yeah. anyways, since they're all SVG. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you can go through different uh, icon sets if you've got them too. Cool. So. Tim mentioned earlier too, if you want free icons, there's a really cool website called FontPick that was designed by one of our guests on the German live streams. So oh, we, wow. We do some Adobe Live German streams um, once a month and he was one of the guests and he created this app and it's pretty cool. I think there's over 8,000 icons you can get for free. Wow, So that's, that's a lot of icons. Another cool resource if you're just starting out and you're not sure yet whether you wanna make the investment, you can play around with some icons. Um, Mohammed, that's a good question. You can design icons in Illustrator and then actually open that Illustrator file directly into XD. And then you can then manipulate it however you want. I see Val bringing the chat and win hype. You have about 12 minutes, so stick around. If you haven't said hi yet, please join the chat and say hi to us. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, even more so, we'd love to answer them. Yeah. Cool, so we got our icons. Super Oops. easy to resize. Yep, as long as I grab the right thing. <laughs> I wonder what the trigger icon will be. You're just gonna go with like a person or? Uh, I think it's probably just a, a pumpkin if they have, well I know they have pumpkins. It could be, yeah, I'll probably just go with the pumpkin for now. I like, it goes with the theme too for your rating system. Yeah, it's yep, consistent. yep. Hi Mooberries, I hope I said that right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're live right now designing a trick-or-treating app with Evan Place in Adobe XD. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, we also have a challenge going on. You can read above that about that above chat on behance.net slash live. Um, but if you share it with us, we will review it on stream and you could win a year subscription to Creative Cloud. Figure out which. Yeah, I think that works. I was trying to figure out what color to make that so that it looks depressed, mm. um, so that this one stands out. That that's the one that is selected. Um, you know, make sure that these are on our eight-point grid. So it's 32 pixels, and these are 24. Um, I'm not as concerned about the outside. Um, mm. We're close, actually, um, but. Uh, it's more so just the vertical spacing than when there's elements close to. So gotcha. just have these centered. Is that just um, because it's more noticeable because you have a reference, like a frame of reference? or? Yeah, that and it just kind of gives that, like, like I said, like a foundation for one, the designer, uh, but two, the developer. Mm. Um, they, they've kind of got that, that frame of reference uh, it, as they create other things, just knowing that it's supposed to be in eight, eight point increments. Right. Um, so if it's not, then then hopefully they can they can question you mm -hmm. um, and just kind of keep you in check a little bit. And I forgot to ask, what font are you using? Uh, Proxima Nova. Nice. Yeah. Someone was talking about that in the last stream, and they asked if it was a more updated version of Futura. And I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I I guess I don't know for sure. Like visually, to me, like it doesn't look the same as Futura, but I don't know how I don't know enough about the font to know how it was created. Um, maybe they started with Futura and changed it. Um, I just know I end up using it a lot in uh, the UI stuff that uh, I do work on um, for clients and, and otherwise. So, um, plus there's a, a ton of different weight options uh, that gives you that flexibility there too. Nice. So. It looks like Eric says, no, it's not. So, Eric has confirmed I will. they're different. He has the power of the internet at his fingers, so. <laughs> Hard to argue with that. Probably knows. Tarek, thanks for being here. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And if you want to design along with us, check out the challenge. You can read about it right above chat on Behance. So 
the one thing I want to keep in mind too as I'm doing this um, is knowing that we have the ability to do to auto animate a lot of things now, um, which we'll get to probably tomorrow. But I want to keep that in mind as I do things. So um, if they click the the treater button, uh, I'm going to carry this icon over to this screen. Uh, that's kind of what this shape is for. Um, so have a cool little transition there. Cool. Um, just kind of carry that through. Yeah, we were talking about this at one point. Maybe it was yesterday. Um, the idea that there's auto animate in XD now, but you also have to know how to think like an animator. So you can you can use the tool, but it takes some practice and some trial and error to make sure that the animation is actually doing what you want it to do, or something that's intuitive for the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've luckily had um, have some background in, in animation. Uh, in college, did some actually got the opportunity to do some hand drawn animation, which was pretty cool, uh, and then just doing things frame by frame. But then. Uh, got a little bit more into motion graphics in After Effects uh, for some client work and, and just for some stuff for fun. So yeah. That's super cool. Do you feel like, I mean, I think it's implied, but I feel like your animation experience probably comes through and makes it a little easier to use auto-animate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it helps knowing what you're trying to do. Uh, like, you've got that goal in mind rather than just kind of playing with the settings and see what happens, which, which Sometimes that works too because you can land, you know, on things that maybe you didn't necessarily think of. Mm -hmm. um, but it does definitely help because you've got that that foundation to build off of. Yeah, I think so. And it's another one of those examples where, as designers or artists or whatever it is you do in your day job, you sort of collect a bunch of skills that all work really well together in certain arenas. And I think this is one. Where, as a UI UX designer, you can leverage a lot of those skill sets to come up with some really cool and complex and fun and innovative ideas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there's just, and there's always a lot of opportunity for um, like micro interactions and things like that mm -hmm. if, if you kind of have that, that toolbox of, of things to pull from. Yeah, right on. I didn't say hi yet, but thanks for joining us, Constantine. Crystal, nice to see you. It looks like those are our, our new chatters. Felipe, I don't know if I've said hi to you yet, but nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And Mohammed asks, what are we gonna win? So in six minutes, if you stay around and you get in chat on behance.net slash live, you could win 100 free stickers from stickermule.com. Uh, these are three by three custom die cut stickers. They can be whatever you want them to be. It's just a redemption code to get 100 of them for free. And you can't have enough stickers. That's correct. And also, if you're looking to try and win Creative Cloud for a year, you can check out the challenge. One designer on the day that shares a challenge entry with us will actually win a year subscription to Creative Cloud, and we'll show your work in the morning tomorrow and announce the winner in the very first stream with Peter Del Tondo and Howard Pinsky. Cool. So I think for this, we will take advantage of the fancy Repeat grid. Oh, You're learning. First, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's that 24. Oh, so Eric has a quote for us about Proxima Nova. I wanted the general proportions and stroke contrast of Helvetica. Or accidents. accidents grotesque, yeah. But with construction and details borrowed from Future yeah. Cabal Active Topics. Cool. So there is so, some reference of Futura, so that wasn't completely wrong. A little. It's a very much a hybrid, but I think that's true about almost any design. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fonts or otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> like everything is inspired by something. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that with us, Eric. Came in for us. Clutch. And Alafe, yes, you actually do need to be present to win the prize. So when we do the drawing, you'll see fireworks behind us. We'll ask you to get busy and chat, and then we'll use a random script to pick one active chatter that's been chatting in that minute to win the prize. I'm glad you're enjoying them, Sean. Thanks for being here. Password. Actually, I want to 
change something quick. Let's make sure that is again in line 16 point. Nice. Actually, let's try eight just to see. Yeah, I like that better. Cool. When you're designing these screens, do you ever think about the amount of space below the like login and the sign in, or is that not something to? Um, uh, it just. Uh, I think a lot of it is just, you know, visual balance, mm -hmm. um, and depending on if you have buttons below or whatnot. But um, yeah, there's there's definitely some uh, liberty there uh, based on on spacing and whatnot. But uh, so I don't know that I necessarily have a, a real go-to like increments. Yeah. Um, you just kind of feel it out. Yeah, especially because button size itself would would make a difference. Mm -hmm. The form sizes or field sizes and, and everything, so. Cool. Uh, I stand corrected. Leif, I'm sorry I said your name wrong. Rhymes with safe. And to be present for the challenge, uh, you just have to share it with us before 2.30 p.m. Pacific time today. We'll select a winner after the last stream, so you don't have to be present for when we select the winner. But we will announce the winner tomorrow morning and show it on stream, so if you want to come back around for that, that'd be a great time to be in the chat while everyone's celebrating your design, if you win. So we've got 40, 48, and that is not right. So let's move all these up. So Munir has a question for you. Feel free to keep designing. Um, but he's wondering how you present your UI UX projects on Behance from start to finish, or it could be on an ePortfolio. Yeah. How do you tell the story? Yeah, so um, I think a lot of it is good to, so when we started, we have kind of got a real rough outline here of what the problem is, the goal and solution, what features you want to do, and, and the screens that are involved. Um, I don't know that you necessarily have to list all of this, but uh, I think that it is helpful to define the parameters that you're working in. Um, you know, what problem are you actually trying to solve with um, whatever design you're working on? And then what is your approach and why does your solution work? Mm. So I think just explaining a little bit of that helps uh, mm. just to set that groundwork. And then uh, again, just, just kind of show your process. So if you sketch out on paper, uh, or if you start digitally in wireframing, um, just kind of show some of that uh, and explain a little bit of your thinking uh, for, for why you approach things the way that you did and then just kind of like build through the project that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's uh, where a lot, of, a lot of like portfolios are going is more towards like case study. So less is, less is more in terms of of quantity, um, but the quality of those projects, because mm. they're so in-depth, um, I think gives a lot more insight as to how you think as a designer um, and just the different the different way that you approach things. Yeah, I agree. I feel like we see a lot of portfolios um, submitted to us, and I really enjoy the ones that have a few s projects that have a lot of context and yeah. a lot of process built into them, and they really demonstrate the, the full design from beginning to end rather than having just like one artboard that's like a mock of up of the onboarding screen or of the splash yeah. screen and then maybe one screen after that it doesn't really tell the story yeah yeah another thing is like if you work on something with with other people that like just make sure that you give credit to like what you like the actual parts that you did um, and what part you didn't do just mm -hmm. so that you're not misleading and just being uh, honest and, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's yeah. a great point. I mean, most projects are collaborative. Uh, if you look over there, hey, hey we got some special going on. I think I, I think I think I smell some firework fireworks. Maybe it's Fourth <laughs> of July. I don't know. Something's going on. It's Chad and Win. If you're here right now and you're watching the stream, this is your chance to get on Behance.net/live and jump into chat. Why don't you go ahead and answer a question for us? Today's question is, what's your favorite so no. Halloween costume? Okay, yeah. What's your favorite Halloween costume? And uh, before we get to that, we'll be right back. Really quick video.
All right, we're back and it's time to announce our winner very soon. Um, I'm still looking for some some costume ideas. We've got anything Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars is always uh, Wayne's World, Elvis, Beetlejuice. Somehow I knew Val was gonna say Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, big Star Wars fan. Just a hunch. Sure. Just a hunch. <laughs> Dalmatian costume, that's, that's unique. Pikachu, Jedi, Star Wars. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Um, I don't know. Like I said, I like, I like the ones, you know, I mentioned the one yesterday that, that I made, like where it's a box, like any of them that like play mental tricks on you, mm -hmm. I think are, are kind of fun. Yeah, it's, I like clever outfits too. Yeah. Or when people get creative, like Tarek Osama is our winner today for 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. We'll send you co a code on Behance here in just a couple minutes. And don't worry if you didn't win the chat and win, there's still a chance to get something for free. Uh, we'd like to give you 10 free stickers from Sticker, Sticker Mule. All you have to do is go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live and you can check it out there and get your stickers. Congrats. Okay, oops. So we've got the icon at the top, the text, uh, the fields. I gotta do the button and the two breadcrumbs yet. We talked yesterday about maybe the possibility of animating the breadcrumbs or like creating yeah. a drag option. Yeah, and I think yeah, we'll we'll try to we'll try to do that. Um, I'm hoping that we can get through all the design stuff today, and then tomorrow we'll we'll really dive in more into the uh, prototyping mm -hmm. and auto animate and kind of play around there. Nice. So yeah, I think I think that is one thing with with this is um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for for different things. Um, like these onboarding cards, I know we talked about trying to drag those through, um, mm -hmm. and then having this illustration um, kind of animate from screen to screen. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely cool. have a lot to play with, I think. I'm really excited to see that come together. Yeah, it's always fun when you get to start prototyping and like, feels like a real thing, you yeah. Know? for sure. Like when you click through it and it, you can't really tell the difference between if it's li a live application or a prototype, yeah. I think that's pretty special. Yeah. Young Eric has a joke for us. He dresses up as gluten, and it scares the trendy hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Jan. <laughs> that one's pretty clever. <laughs> clever in a different way, but I like it. Get some claps. Put the bread emote in chat. <laughs> that one's funny. I like that. <laughs> Jan's always good for some jokes. He's one of the more clever viewers we've ever had. And just a shout out to him, I think Jan might be one of the first ever viewers of live wow. streams for Adobe. He started watching our live streams back, way back in October of 2015 when we started streaming on Twitch. Wow, that's cool. So he's an OG. Thanks for being here and always making us laugh. So we're working with the eight point grid, making sure everything looks good or? Yep, yep. Um, so we've got eight point or eight pixels between all of those, 16 there, and then still need to adjust this one. Mm -hmm. So we're at 52, oops, I wanna group that first. I know we're not quite there yet, but when you, let's say you wanted to hand this off to a developer, what sort of steps would you take? Uh, like let's say that you've got your screen designs done and you know the prototype looks the way you want it to look. Yeah, so I am pretty sure that you can create a link through here. Can you not? And then uh, they can pull a lot of that, that uh, design information from here, Yep. right? Yeah, so, exactly, um, yeah, you can publish design specs, which is pretty nice. Yeah, so uh, it makes it pretty easy to, to hand off them that route. Um, obviously, there's probably always gonna be a few questions here and there, mm -hmm. um, but I think that just makes it a real easy way to like share it and um, you know just kind of keep things updated. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I think you can even include the assets when you publish design yeah, specs. Yeah, yeah, yep. Which is cool. And I think we talked about this yesterday, and Peter talked about it in the stream before this. But always working really closely with your developers, even as you're designing or finding developers that you really know and have worked with and trust, 
b even before you start designing. Yeah. So you know that you're on the same page is always a good, really good way to approach that situation. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's giving Jan Eric a lot of hype and love in chat <laughs> right now. <laughs> nice. But seriously, shout out to all of you. Thanks for being here. We really love hanging out with you every week. I know I do. Uh, if you're a regular and you talk to Adobe Live in chat, other than right now, <laughs> uh, you're talking to me. So thanks for being here. Uh, one thing that works good about just uh, copying artboards over mm -hmm. is if you've got all of these named, then these remain named too. Oh, nice. So um, I was going to go back and name them, and they're already done because I didn't even think about it. If you were designing like on your own, not on a live stream, would you be naming all of your artboards and everything? Assets? Um, should I be? Yes. Um, would you? But uh, I do when I think <laughs> of it and yeah. when I have time to. It's kind of like, it's one of those things where like, like if you're trying to work quickly, it's like a catch 22, cause like you want to make it organized and, and easy for one yourself to reference back later mm -hmm. or, or to navigate through, uh, and also for anyone else, but it does take more time too. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a balance game sometimes. I think a, a new use case or reason why you might want to do it now is you can do voice commands in XD and you could potentially use them to find artboards if oh. you have a really big file. But if you are if you have like Untitled 2, Untitled 3, like all the way across the board, it won't be so useful. Sure, yeah. And the other thing is that with Auto Anime, I think that references the layer names. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as the layer names are the same uh, from artboard to artboard, nice. then uh, it'll animate those. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So yeah, keep, keeping organized is, uh, is important. Thank you, Jan. You're doing a great job also. Um, Munir has another question. What do you do when you have creative block? Uh, good question. Um, I think a lot of times, like the quickest thing is like just to, to ask someone um, and explain to them that you're stuck. Because uh, sometimes like I don't always know what to look for either online. Um, or at least it can be tricky. So um, yeah, that's just, where I, I lean on my, my friends a little bit more and try to explain what I'm trying to do. And if I'm stuck, then hopefully they've got some ideas, so. Yeah, maybe they can kind of like give you a, a jump start. Yeah. And, or, you know, give you a spark that then makes you think, oh, I know what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, or, or maybe they'll even point you to something else they've seen or just a, a new idea um, to, to look at and, and consider, so yeah. Uh, Derek says he asks his brother for ideas. <laughs> yeah. Ideas. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> That's very good, Derek. Like any brother should say. Indeed. <laughs> you know what I like to do when I have creative block? I go that? fishing. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I love getting outside. Oh yeah. And just like breaking free of the screens. Yeah. Get some fresh air. Get some sunshine on my skin. Oh. Yeah. Like I'll just decide. It really is like. Yeah, like sometimes you just need that break because you get like tunnel vision mm -hmm. and like you're just stuck into something. So, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely enjoy fishing. So, a couple fishermen up here. Oh, yeah. Any fishermen in chat? I know we've got a couple. I know Matthias is in there. Oh, uh, Dana, um, I'm on camera right now. So, the Gus bot right now is actually Sam Shushtari. So, you've probably seen her in chat also. So it's Sambot. Yeah, it's Sambot right now. But then after the stream, it will be Gusbot again. Oh, we've got Aaron. Aaron Fields is a fisherman. He says loves it. Lay fishes, but doesn't eat it. I like to do that too. Yeah, yeah. Catch, catch and release is always nice. <laughs> Lala says, no, but if anyone wants to share a rainbow trout. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's fair. Yeah, I think living in Minnesota, you pretty much, like, you kind of have to fish. Like, I mean, we're the land of 10,000 lakes. Like, you kind of have to. Yeah. It's, yeah. I feel like Minnesota is very much a fishing destination. Yeah. yeah. And I think Ohio kind of is, too, in a way. There's a lot of streams and rivers in Ohio. So. Sure. And California is, too. One thing I haven't done is, uh, like, fishing on the ocean or anything, which I would like to do that, but. Oh, you got to. 
f ocean fishing is a totally different experience. Oh yeah. It's very fun. And I'm used to like the same like group of species of fish mm -hmm. to catch and I'm just like, yeah, it would be totally different. So yeah. that'd be fun. It's kind of fun when you, even if it's a little fish, like if you've never caught it before. Yeah. You think, oh. Yeah, definitely. I've never seen this. Yeah, exactly. And then you figure out how to catch new fish. It's always fun. It's a challenge. They're talking about tackle boys in chat. I'm not sure I know what that is. <laughs> um, tackle boys is my my YouTube channel. Right oh, now, where I make YouTube videos for fishing. <laughs> awesome. I gotta check those out. <laughs> you should. Do you still do? Do you still make them? Yeah, every now and then, when I find the time, when I'm not being Gus Bot, <laughs> I try to go fishing and make a YouTube video. Emily says deep sea fishing is where it's at. Yeah, I'd like to try that sometime. And ice fishing is fun too, Jazzy says. Ice fishing is your jam, right? Yeah, I do enjoy ice fishing. One, because I think uh, it always freaks people out that haven't been ice fishing. It's like, you drive on the lake? Yeah. Like, yeah, we do. It's a lot of ice. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ice. Uh, when you're there, do you use the gas-powered augers or do you use the manual one? Um. I use whichever one my dad has with, because <laughs> I don't have one. The manual one gets so tired. It does. It does. Like they work, but oh, yeah, it's yeah. I I went this past winter and like I drilled like maybe five tester holes, and afterwards we had to like <laughs> that was take it. turns. Like we were passing it forth, yeah. back and forth between one another because we all had tired arms. Tarek, nice to see you in chat again. You did win the chat and win. I'm glad you now see that. Enjoy your free stickers. And if you didn't win the chat and win, we did give away free stickers, 10 of them. But we'll also do another chat and win in the next stream, so stick around for that. Mohammed's going fishing tonight. Oh, I'm pretty jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds really What are you fun. fishing for? I'm curious. All right, so I'll let you know what he's fishing for once we get the answer. Perfect. Until then catch up to speed on the design. So you're more or less mimicking what you did on previous art yep, boards. Yep, just kind of trying to be efficient and duplicate things. So um, I only have three fields here, but um, making sure that they're all aligned so that when things do change, like they don't nudge up a pixel or mm -hmm. anything. Uh, and there's keeping these breadcrumbs in the same position too. Um, just because it's not necessarily like they're different screens here, um, but hopefully when we animate that, it it's still the same screen. Uh, so I don't want these breadcrumbs jumping around. Yeah, uh, that could be weird. So. Unless they're supposed to be like little candies that like run around the screen <laughs> or something. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> like little like the loading screen is like little candies chasing each other <laughs> back and forth. Oh, that would be yeah, that would be. Fun. I mean, I don't know if you want. I a think there's screen, a lot but. of. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would be it'd be fun to try though. Yeah. The breadcrumbs or candy crumbs. Matthias is a pike master. I I could be wrong, but I think that your the biggest pike that Matthias has ever caught is like twelve kilograms, something like that. Which is I need I need a pounds. It's version. like thirty pounds ish. Wow. Which is a which is a big pike. That is big. Yeah. Uh, Natalie, that's a good question. Can you share a prototype link with someone not having an Adobe account? Yeah, it's super easy. All you have to do in the top right corner of XD, there's a button that looks like sort of a share button with an arrow pointing out. If you click on it, you can share an online prototype. And that prototype can be accessed by anyone that has the link. Oh, 9.8 kilograms, 120 centimeters. Do some quick, wow. I'll do a quick calculation to get the exact poundage. Yeah, I'm still stuck in the sad world of English Standard. It's 21 and a half pounds. Wow. So I overestimated a little bit, but. That's still a big fish. Yeah, that's a big pike. Hi, Tiana, nice to see you. Brenna says, yes, do the candies for loading. <laughs> We'll have to see if we can throw that in. I keep throwing wrenches in Evan's plan. I'm like, nah, ooh, nah. ooh, you should do that'd this. Be, <laughs> that'd be fun. That'd, that'd be fun to try. Kathleen says she missed the beginning. So just in case you're joining right now, 
Uh, quick recap, Evan right now is transforming some wireframes that he created yesterday into more high fidelity designs today that he will then prototype and animate tomorrow. Uh, he's creating a, an app uh, for trick-or-treaters that's similar to Waze. And we're about mm, halfway through the segment, yep. about 45 minutes into it. So if you're just joining, it's not too late. Uh, we're working on the designs right now. If you have a question, please let us know. Val. <laughs> so Voodoo Val is, is obsessed with Kylo Ren. I wouldn't oh. say obsessed. I mean, she's probably married to him, so it's okay. <laughs> and, and she says, I once caught a Kylo fish. <laughs> uh, use a special type of bait. Kylo fish is, uh, is only like limited edition Darth Vader collectibles. And he's like 240 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Uh, it's kind of hard to argue with that. She's got her facts straight. <laughs> The Swedish record for a pike is 46.4 pounds. I, I don't know what I'd do if I... Yeah, I was 46 saying. pound pike? Oh, that's I mean, like... 46 pound anything. Yeah. Like, that's a big fish. Yeah. We caught a giant catfish once growing up, and we didn't have a net, so we had to like take a Noodle blank. it? No, uh. no, no. <laughs> so we took a an old blanket out of our, the trunk of our car and like kind of netted it nice. in, so... And you, and you landed it? it? Was, yeah, it was, uh, my buddy Chris Johnson caught it. It was, I think it was like 22 pounds. Whoa. Yeah, it was a big cat. Was fish. it a flathead? Uh, no, I'm trying to think what, I don't know. There's so many different catfish. I can't remember which one it was, but. I've seen some big flathead catfish, but that's about the only ones. Yeah. Those are the ones you noodle. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I'd, I'd rather stick to my uh, rod and reel, I think, for that. I, I feel like some of our viewers don't know what noodling is. Do you oh. want to explain? <laughs> uh, <laughs> y you can if you okay. want. Okay, I'll explain the noodle. You might be able to do it better than I can. So in like really muddy rivers that have big catfish in them, uh, the catfish like to burrow in holes in the side of the river and then live there. It's their home. And what some people like to do is they dive underwater or they feel around with their feet until they feel a hole. And then they dive under and they stick their arm as far back into it as they can and try and get the catfish to bite their arm. Or they use their finger as a noodle <laughs> to catch the catfish. And then they grab its mouth and then pull it up out of the water. It's pretty crazy. Have you ever been with someone that does that? No. Oh, I think I've that seen would them be underwater fun. before. They're freaky. I, would, I don't think I'd put my oh, hand yeah, in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any of that. Val says noodling is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, human bait is right. It's it's wacky. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube of noodling. Oh yeah. And I think it's kind of a Midwestern thing. It's like a Midwest. Is it Midwest or West, southern? southern? I thought it was kind of southern, but I don't know that. I don't know. Maybe it's southern. I don't know. You're probably right. And Al says, rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough life for those catfish. <laughs> Just hanging out, <laughs> hanging out in their little mud hole, minding their own business. Yeah. And then someone and then they get shoves their finger down there. Like, <laughs> what the heck? Come on. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why they bite it. People probably think that they're fooling them, but they're probably just annoyed. Kathy says it happens in Tennessee. That's where the yeah. annual noodling championships <laughs> are held. The world championships. All right, enough noodle talk. <laughs> Let's talk about your design here. Yeah, so we've gotten through welcome screen. Uh, you pick that you are a treater, and that brings you to this field. Uh, fill out your name, email, password, and then confirm your password. Hit next, brings you these next few different options um, where it is a house name. So you, rather than having um, I guess rather than having the home listed as a person, um, I thought it would make more sense if, if you could actually name the home. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when referencing it, um, it just seemed to make to make sense a little bit more. Uh, then the address, zip code, and then you submit that. After that, then we've got a few onboarding screens. Um, just kind of let the user know 
what they'll be able to do. Um, so that is what we're working on now. So we'll have um, same this one screen. Has like three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's one screen. Uh, it'll look like three, but it's one screen, and then it'll have three different cards. So just for the sake of of showcasing the cards, we'll just duplicate the screen mm -hmm. and change the cards. Uh, but then once we prototype it um, tomorrow, we will. Um, it'll be a little more clear that it's just a single screen and mm -hmm. that you can you can drag through them. So. Right. But until then, we need to make the static version. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mohammed, that's a good question. Adobe XD is available on Windows, but I believe you need Windows 10 or newer. So I don't believe it works on Windows 7. And also, a noodling app would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what would that do? I don't know. Maybe it's like for the catfish to like commiserate. <laughs> It's just a social like, network. Like, did someone pull you out of your house today by your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch out. <laughs> yeah, there's like two sides to it. And then the noodlers can like talk about where their noodle holes are. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'll get off that topic. Uh, but if Evan joins us again on Adobe Live, we might design a noodling app. That, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> Val, thanks for the reminder. Yes, you have about 40 minutes, a little less than 40 minutes, 37 minutes to submit a design for today's challenge. We've asked you to design um, and prototype a fast, for, fast food ordering app for a mobile, mobile device. Uh, it can be as many screens as you desire, but we say bonus points if you're using some of the new recent tools in Adobe XD like overlays, Definitely. Uh, fixed elements, some animations. I would love to see a hamburger menu in a fast food ordering app. As an actual hamburger? That's a hamburger. Yeah. And you click on the hamburger. A little slice of cheese hanging out. Yes. I'm just waiting for it, so please someone, someone design it. And share it with us in the next 36 minutes so we can review it on stream and you'll have the chance to win a year subscription to Creative Cloud. <laughs> oh gosh, they're having fun with this. Noodler is the new tender. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Whisker is the app name. <laughs> oh boy. What have we started? Oh my gosh. It's the catfish dating app. <laughs> Which could be taken a different way, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Have we considered naming the app Treat Street? It's pretty good. Uh, that is good. We haven't had that yet, Madison. Thanks for sharing it with us. I got to add it to my list here. Treat Street was uh, not on the list. I liked, I liked, uh, oh yeah, Candy House Hunters. Candy, yeah. Candy, yeah, Candy House Hunters fun. is my favorite. Yeah. We said it sounds like a show on HD, HGTV. It's like, it's like a stay at home, daytime TV programming type TV show. Cool, so we're designing the first card yep. of the three cards series. Yeah, so the, the three that, that we'll have um, is that they'll be able to set their hours, set their status, and then add tags, which I think is, is kind of more the fun part. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give them a quick like reminder. Uh, well, I guess not a reminder, but to let them know um, what to expect and what, what to actually be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll probably also have a a skip option in case they are already familiar with it. Um, I don't want to waste time yeah. reading it. So. so here on those cards, you won't actually be able to list your hours. It'll just be informational. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. these cards are yeah are just just to let the user know what to expect. Cool. So okay. um, here's the the, th the three different things that they'll be able to do, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll get to the profile screen where it actually lists the hours nice, nice. where the tags are. R and then um, yeah, cool. where the images are and everything. So I like that a lot. I also like how you used "got it" as your skip button. I yeah, it's, it's nice because I feel like that's kind of colloquial. Like it's casual and it feels like something you might use if you're just chatting yeah. with your friends. Yeah, yep. And I think anytime you can kind of. Like I said, change any of the the copy to be something that's a little bit more personable, um, mm -hmm. and just not so 
I guess stereotypical, um, I think is always a is always a good thing. Yeah. I think some of our favorite experiences and app designs, like collectively, are ones that have fun. Like ones that use, you know, candy instead of breadcrumbs or they have silly yeah, emotes yeah. or they have their own way of speaking at you because it's it's memorable and it's fun to interact with. And it kind of it's kind of like when you hang out with your one friend that's like really funny. You all all of a sudden you feel like, yeah, I'm funny too. <laughs> and you like start cracking jokes. Yeah. It like rubs off on you a little bit. Yeah. And I think if your app's fun, your your users are also gonna have fun. Yeah. I think it too, it just it just helps like yeah, it just doesn't feel like like work, like like you're just having fun with it. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I definitely agree. Gladstone has a question. How do I add a bullet in between two text? So between you want a bullet point in between two bodies of text? If that's what you're asking, then you could create two text boxes, right? And then just yeah. add a bullet point in between them. I don't know if he's talking like this. Um, yeah. That type of thing. Or sometimes, sometimes instead of a bullet, um, they might just throw a little dash there, mm -hmm. um, yeah. just to kind of break it up. Yeah, let us know if that's what you're looking to do. Um, if not, you can clarify and we'll try and help you again. Yeah. But good question. If you have any more, please keep them coming. Um, how do you typically get inspired for your work? Is there anything like a, a website or a designer that you look to to kind of get yourself um, in the zone? I don't know. I'll I'll look at a, a lot of different things online. Um, I know Behance has a few different like um, curated, um, I don't know if they're groups is what they're called or not. Um, so check those things out. A lot of times I'll do that like right away in the morning just to kind of, you know, get the creative juices flowing and just kind of get in that mindset. Um, so I'll reference that. Dribble is another great one. Um, I think I can show it actually. So you're talking oh, yeah. about the curated galleries here? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's any specific ones in general, but it's just a, a good yeah. way to... Well, there's one for interaction design right here. Yeah, perfect. Motion design, illustration, photography, graphic design. So whatever yeah. your field is, that can be really cool. Yeah. And, and there's find just a lot all of you need to do is there. go to discover and then click on curated galleries. It's very simple. All right, we'll get back to you. in a sentence in between two words. So like a period? Bullet between two words. Uh, I wonder if he means a Oh, like a in dash? the text box? Uh, I know in, um, I wonder if he's talking about like, uh, you know how when things are typed out like phonetically, mm -hmm. like uh, it'll break it apart by oh, syllables. Yeah. Um, I know that You, if you hold option in, is it eight? I think, I think that's what it was. Yeah, Nice. Uh, you can type a bullet. Cool, so Gladstone, try option eight. I don't know if it's different on a PC. Um, yeah, there's gotta be a different one for Windows. But I'm sure you could look that up. It I'm could sure just be like, you know, instead of option. Uh, control, yeah. I think is a lot of times. Nice, Dagny agrees, option eight. Perfect. And Munir, no problem. Thanks for asking such nice questions. It's always great to see what you're thinking on the other side of the screen and get some interaction going. We now have less than 30 minutes for you to share your challenges with us. Evan and I would love to offer some pointers. Yeah. Specifically Evan, I'm not a UI UX designer by trade, so Evan will be taking the reins. Sure. But yeah. you'll get a little, some really good feedback, um, and hopefully you can improve as a designer. Plus, it's just fun to see what people, what people make and the way they think. It's yeah. just always fun. Yep. So I want to make sure that I've got the space for the breadcrumbs here. 
has 16. I just want to make sure I do the same just to be consistent um, for these as well. I just realized something that's, this is my fault. I asked people to use auto animate in the challenge, but you can't actually show the auto animate feature in the live preview link. So there might be some prototypes that tried to use auto animate, but we can't see it. So we'll have to use our imagination. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And just assume that they did it. I think if they get to that far anyways, they're doing pretty darn well. Yeah, I agree. Jan says, command equals control, option equals alt. I learned this the hard way when switching to Mac. So if we have, if we say it's, it was option eight or command eight? It's option. So option would be alt eight in Windows. I always get confused by that. And actually, the option key does say alt. Indeed it does. <laughs> oh no. Uh -oh. We've got a Gus bot joke. <laughs> Gus, what is it like to experience a corpial form? Will you be up uploaded back into the mainframe after this week is done? What will happen to your meat suit? <laughs> Well, joke's on you, because I'm actually a hologram. Um, but I'm kind of like Jarvis, have you seen? Oh yeah, yeah. So I have like, a, I have an Avengers stone this week ask. that they gave me, and I don't plan on giving it back. Nice. So I'll probably just- Someone will have to pry it from you. Probably just hang out in the office and annoy people with my internet brain. Oh, Christoph, I'm so sorry. We'll do our best to picture the animations that you've created for us. You can either do that, Christoph, or you could take a video of your prototype and share the video with us. I'm sure that's another way you could share it with us. <laughs> Skynet. And I think I had set your status, but I think I'm actually gonna change it to your description because I think that would make more sense. Nice. Um, if any of you have um, spooky references or copy ideas for the app, please share them in chat. Yeah. Like for instance, list your hours or set a description. If you can think of a funny Halloween way to say the same thing, we'd love to hear it. And it could find its way into the app prototype. Definitely. Hologram, Amy Winehouse will be touring soon. Oh, that's cool. I did. I saw that they did a hologram a while ago of Tupac at a concert. And it looked like really real, there's some super debate real. If, and people uh, were like, "If he's actually, yeah, was that a hologram?" Or... Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, Tupac featuring Gus Bot. Just hang out with my fellow <laughs> hologram buds. Tupac featuring. Yeah, I like to hear that song. Mohammed, uh, this app is being created specifically for you viewers who are watching the stream right now. It's a fictional app and you'll be able to access it later. I don't know if Evan's planning on doing this, but he might make a, a project uh, out of what he creates this yeah. week, and yep. you can interact with it after the streams are over. Elise asks, do you use copy, always use copy versus lorem ipsum in your prototypes? Um, I usually try to, uh, just because I think a lot of times, like. Lorem Ipsum, I think, is good for placeholder. Um, from a design perspective, like, like I think for the designer, um, but I think if you're able to, anytime you're able to actually add a little bit more context to the app uh, mm -hmm. through copy, it, it just kind of helps helps the, the the client to visualize the, the way that it could be used. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes, yeah, you kind of you kind of got to walk them through a little bit and um, just kind of guide their thinking a little bit. Okay. Uh, I know that, um, yeah, any any custom copy that you can do um, a lot of times goes a long way. I agree. I think that especially on this phase when you're creating the actual design, 
using copy versus lorem ipsum really matters. Yeah. Um, we have some great ideas. Uh, one for set your hours, you could say set witching hours. Boo Duval and Kathleen both said that. Nice. And then for your description, it could be tell us your ghost story. Oh, that's good. Something like that. Oops. Along those lines. Thanks for the ideas, Kathleen and Val, and I'll actually pull up chat on my computer so that I make sure I don't miss any. Uh, Miriam had a question about auto animate working on images. Um, if you stick around for Howard's stream, he has a like a demo prototype file for auto animate, and he actually uses it to auto animate an image of a mountain on a web page on top of stuff in the background. It creates this very cool parallax effect. So um, that would be a great example for you to see what it can do with images. I don't have a file right now. I think he's got a YouTube channel that has a lot of that stuff too. Yeah, that's right. Is it, it's just Howard Pinsky on YouTube, right? Uh, I don't know if I remember what it is exactly. Let's see. Oops. Yep, I'm sure the mods can share it in chat. Howard has a YouTube channel where he has videos demonstrating that. And Gina asks, how does the Adobe Live team choose guests? We typically find the guests through Behance. Um, another way is we'll actually ask for referrals and references from people that have designed with us or that are already in the, our sort of network of artists. If you have any suggestions or you do want to be an artist on Adobe Live, you can always send a direct message to the Adobe Live account on Behance. Um, I'm the one that reads them, and I would love to hear what you have to say. Beck says, just tuning in, your app's looking great already. I hope you had the great, a great rest of your birthday yesterday. Awesome, thank you, that's and really nice. Same to your husband, Beck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right back to Evan. Evan's birthday also. Yeah. Forty-six. Yeah, of course, no problem. Thanks for asking. We typically look for artists that are somewhat close to where we stream from in San Francisco, just because sometimes, especially if you don't live in the US, the flights and logistics can become very difficult. Uh, but we're open to any suggestions. Hi, Felipe, thanks for joining the stream. Nice to see you. And just a quick reminder, you've got 20 minutes left to submit a challenge design for today's challenge for myself and Evan to review it. And if you're still working and you need more time, you can also share it again in the next stream with Mike and Howard. Okay, so I've got the onboarding screens kind of uh, done in terms of content. Um, but looking at them, I, I think I wanna try to set them apart a little bit more from the other screens. Like everything feels kind of flat and uh, I think we've got um, just the fact that it's a Halloween app, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of potential for images. So I'm going to look for um, some stock photos nice. that I can throw in. Um, Spooky. Yeah, Halloween background. And I think you can filter it by just photos. Mm -hmm. And Gina, Seattle actually is very close, so that's awesome. If you're interested in being a guest on Adobe Live, feel free to send your information to us on the Adobe Live account. At the very least, it's nice to make your acquaintance. I think one of the really cool things about our live streaming events every week is anyone that's watching or is par especially participating in chat, they're sort of growing and developing a community of designers that can provide feedback for one another 
and they typically follow each other and do some nice yeah. things that um, sometimes it's hard to find your community, especially if you're just starting off as a creative. Yeah, so, and I definitely know what that is like. Like I said, uh, I grew up in a town of 1600. Um, and like I said, I would be willing to bet that a majority of the people don't even know what UI, UX mm -hmm. is or means. Um, but that's where, like, yeah, and like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, an extrovert, really. Um, but the internet does make it a little bit easier to reach out to people. Um, so don't be afraid to, to reach out on, on Twitter or Instagram or, or wherever, um, just to, to like say that you appreciate their work and that mm -hmm. you know, you're just starting out and if you want them to look at something or, or just ask for tips, like, like don't be afraid to reach out. Um, that's actually how I met Peter. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw his one blog post about Creative South um, and then inadvertently, you know, made me interested in Creative South, and I think I just um, reached out to him on Twitter and yeah. said that you know I liked his article and whatnot. And so then a year later, got to go to Creative South, meet met Peter, uh, Mike Jones, and a whole slew of other um, other designers. And uh, yeah, it's like and it's, some of them are your coworkers now, right? Yeah, 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 and that's yeah exactly. That's how I, I got the the job that I have now is. As uh, just meeting those people online, yeah. so I know it sounds like you know it can sound cliche or mm -hmm. or, or unrealistic, but yeah, I think that it's easy for especially when you're dealing with an age where we're all kind of hiding behind not hiding, but we all have like these online profiles, right? You tend to th not think of the people behind the profile as like a person. It's like yeah. it's like oh they have a they're famous on Instagram or they have a YouTube channel or whatever it is. But like real people run it, and more often than not, if you reach out to them, you'll probably get a response. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is really kind of exciting that you have that much access to amazing designers. And a good example is right now, like Evan's a professional designer, and he's designing live in front of everyone that's watching. And all you have to do is ask him a question, and then, boom, you get an answer, and you can kind, yeah. of, kind of learn some pro tips from someone that's working in a field that you might have interest in. So, please get involved. Eric says, all my friends are on here besides my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be your friend, Eric. And Osama, thanks for joining. It's nice to see you. Osama helps out a lot in our, um, actually speaking of, of this, in our uh, XD Slack. So we do these daily creative challenges for XD um, every so often. And Osama helps us give a little bit of feedback cool. in that Slack channel. That's awesome. And if you're interested in doing a daily challenge for XD, we'll actually be starting one on Monday next week. And all you have to do to join the challenge is um, actually for right now, just hit up the Slack channel. It's bit.ly uh, slash join XD Slack number three. Um, and if you go to that URL, you'll be able to join the Slack channel. So I'm just pulling in a few different, oops, a few different images just to, mostly just to play around and see, see what things look like. Okay, we have a couple questions. Yep. Feel free to keep going. Sure. Um, one of them is, are you going to pick different icons for the last two cards? So are you going to oh, change yeah, yeah, the yeah. clock? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, that was just an error on my part. So Thanks, good Curtis. catch. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, also, a nice reminder that our, our viewers and friends in chat like to say sometimes is remember to save. So if you haven't yes. saved yet, yep. make sure to do that. I will do that right now. And Anel's wondering how you get your clients, or um, so it's a little find work. Yeah, so it's a little bit different for me since I, I work for uh, Unfold, um, which is a digital design agency based out of Florida. Um, so I don't necessarily, you know, deal with that. Um, I know that a lot of um, referrals come in through the website, um, but also just a lot of friends that do freelance work um, just get it through you know, wherever they can showcase their work, whether it's through Behance or Dribble or uh, whatever other ones there are out there. Um, you know, the more the more work that you can continue to push out, um, yeah, I think I think a lot of people notice that and, and um, yeah, it's a good way to, to one, push yourself creatively, um, mm -hmm. 
but two, just to, to you know, attract new new clients. Yeah, in the last stream, Peter had mentioned he gets, this was the number he quoted, he said he gets about 80% of his work through his like online channels, through like Behance and Dribble. Yeah. Um, which is kind of astonishing to me. Yeah, you know? it is, yeah. That's it's, amazing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show that like, like, there are clients out there, and like if you just continue to, to push work out, um, that yeah, hopefully they'll see mm -hmm. it. And, and again, just making those connections with, you know, with friends and like helping each other by sharing some of those things um, through different social mm -hmm. networks and whatnot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that the the online social network doesn't have to only live online. You know, like yeah, it's okay right. to bring that into the real world, and to like give it legs and put it to work and work together and collaborate and do fun yeah. things. Yeah, and I think, I think too, like if, if you've got um, any friends that, that have, you know, a steady flow of work, like just be willing to reach out and just ask if there's anything you can help with. Because um, I know a lot of times mm -hmm. that there might be a few things where they're just tied up and one, be good experience, um, and two, hopefully you're, you're doing them a favor too. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. The last point is like making sure that it, the relationships you build with people, either professionally or even personal relationships, have s some level of like mutual benefit. Like you're, yeah. you're giving and taking. Yeah, on exactly. Both sides. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing you want to definitely like. Like, hopefully, when you reach out, you're not necessarily just asking for things. Like, yeah. like make sure that you know that they know that you appreciate the work they do, and just want to say hey, and that you're getting started. Um, and if there is anything you can offer, um, I don't know, offer it, I guess. And I'm just gonna see what happens. Yeah, I agree. I'm also listening, but I was sharing with everyone a link to the XD Slack. It looks like the bit.ly link that I just cited is no longer active. And I apologize for the long URL and chat, but I believe that should work for you. It was hastily made. We also had a good question from Josh, and he was wondering, when you're finished with the app design, so you've done designing and prototyping in XD, uh, where do you go with it to make it a real app? How do you, how do, you do that? Um, honestly, I would talk to some developers, and if you don't know any developers, um, then again, reach out to some of those people that you've met online or any of your your friends and, and see what see what they say or how they would approach it. Because mm -hmm. um, honestly, that that's probably would be my approach because I haven't had a lot of um, app experience in terms of development and actually creating real projects other than than through the digital agency. Mm -hmm. um, so that would probably be the same same approach that I would take too. So cool. yeah, I think that that's the general approach. And if you've built it already, having in mind the developers you want to work with. The step you would take is then hand off the developer specs to them, yeah. and then work alongside them as they're building it to make sure that your design aligns with what they've executed. So, I think that would be the next step. But suffice it to say, XD is a tool specifically for designing and prototyping apps, not necessarily building them and making them, you know, real functioning apps right. in the App Store, for instance. Okay, we'll get back to your images. Did you find the perfect one? I don't know. I'm, so playing with the, I'm playing with a few different ones, yeah. uh, and then I'm also trying to decide how faded I want them. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'm I like still... this. I like the spooky bat one. Yeah, I think it's that's nice cool. that the bat kind of just fit right in there. Yeah, I think that's cool. I think that one's maybe a little more clear. I think the like I like this image here, but uh, I think it's too busy, mm. and you kind of lose some of it. It just ends up looking like a castle. Yeah, I like how this one has some sky in it. The one on yeah. the left. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. We will try that. Oops. That's super cool. Oops. And you were using command bracket to move yes. layers? Yes, yep, yep. So if you don't know and you're trying to move something up or down on the layers for your artboard, you can use command and the different bracket keys to move it up and down. Go less back. than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes ten to minutes. share your designs with us. The stream's flying by. It is. Okay, let's. So. 
We've got list your hours, set a description, add tags. So the tags, um, one is I kind of know what I'm playing on, and these are what I'm calling tags. I don't know if tags is, is the best word for it, um, but that's what I'm going with for now, and we can always change it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get hung up on, on details like that, um, just because those are easy things to change if we need to. So um, I'm maybe going to jump ahead here just a little bit uh, so that the icon that goes here makes sense. Um, so for when I say tags, I am talking about um, these types of things here. So um, maybe a tag or an icon that uh, signifies that it's handicap accessible, mm -hmm. uh, peanut allergy safe treats, uh, kind of show the scare level. Mm -hmm. If the homeowner wants to give out special limited treats to the first so many people that come to the house, mm -hmm. has spooky sound. So all of these different things. So we'll design an element that will yeah. will house those different ideas. Cool. Um, and then we'll kind of reference that in the icon here. So nice. So that's like some of the really important information in this app. That's like why a lot of people yeah, use exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Also, Daniel has a pro tip for us: Command Shift Open Bracket will move it all the way to the back. So if you don't want well, to, well, that would go be quicker than what Command I Bracket. Cool. You can just add Shift to it. Sweet. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for the tip, Daniel. That's also kind of a, a really cool thing about it, these live streams is I feel like it's always there's always somebody in chat who's a seasoned designer or has a pro tip, and we're learning from them at the same yeah. time that they're learning from us. And yeah. it kind of comes back full circle on the conversation of the relationship is mutual, like we're, we're yep. giving and taking, and it's kind of breathing and living on its own, which is super fun. And no problem, Brenna. I'm happy to answer your questions, and I know Evan is too. Yeah, definitely. So keep them coming. check back on these challenges and see sure. where we're at. All right, so far we have six minutes left, and I have two challenges to review. So if you're still working, now would be a good time to save, share a prototype, and then share the link with us on the challenge tab at behance.net slash live right above the chat. You share it with us, we'll be happy to review it sometime in the next six minutes. And. It's also a pretty hard challenge, so we yeah. know if you're still working, like continue to work and share in the last last stream of the day with Howard and Mike, and they'll be happy to give you a review. Yeah, if you don't feel like you get as far as you wanted to, still share it because um, mm -hmm. any work that you have is better than no work. So right, and maybe we can give you some tips on some improvements, and then you can you can make some improvements and maybe add to your design and then share it again in the next stream, and have a final result that's even more complete than you had initially hoped yeah. for. I know that's one thing too that that always like is a a hurdle for for me and for several people is just like like you want like especially as a designer I feel like you know you want to like continue like there are always improvements to make um, and I feel like you could spend forever on a design um, but. 90% and shared is better than perfect and never shared. So like, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think striving for per perfection in any field, but especially for design can really cripple people. Like they never share their work because they feel like it's yeah. not good enough Yeah. or it's not complete. And I, I really feel like you have to push through that yep. and share it and get feedback to keep improving and really just kind of build up confidence and feel like your work is good enough to be viewed and reviewed. I like these icons you're using for yeah. this. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's so nice, like, a nuclear, like, who would have thought that they have a peanut icon, but they do. And it, and it nailed it. That's yeah. what I love about, I don't know, I just think icons are fascinating. It kind of does, though, I... it looks like an upside down, like, bob, like a bobbly man, you know? <laughs> like those, like, little punching like a, bags oh, that like, yeah. wobble over. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. That's what I see. I'm excited too, Val. I know we've got a, I know we've got a ringer in here. Ooh. Wow. 
Nice designs, everyone. We got Alexander just submitted one. Thanks for sharing it, Alexander. Yeah, thanks. I'm and Kristoff's got out. one. Everyone was waiting until the last minute. Nice. Very cool. Was that spooky music? Yeah, I don't even, I think it was, <laughs> I don't know where that was from. I don't know if you heard that out, <laughs> out in the real world, but we just had spooky music play in the studio. <laughs> Did you hear that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we're haunted. <laughs> That's so funny. So one thing too is with the scare level, uh, I thought it'd be fun to use. I thought a clown kind of worked, uh, especially for Halloween. So we'll have like three different levels. So I'll start with this one, um, but then I'll just try to you modify know a secret it. secret about me? I hate clowns. <laughs> they freak me out. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you're alone there. I can't hang out with a clown. Like if I see one in real life, I gotta just, I gotta bounce. I'm out. Uh, Kathleen Are you actually, able to handle yeah, this? Yeah, I can handle okay. it. Okay. I can handle okay. it. Kathleen had a clever idea about the peanut man, the upside oh, down. Oh, yeah? She said if they had just made the dots reversed, like if it was two dots and then one below, like if it, the triangle was flipped, yep. then it wouldn't it wouldn't seem so much like a peanut man. I'm cool. curious to see. Then maybe it seems like more. It's like now the face is down there. I feel like since it's a triangle, I feel like you're gonna have that no matter what. What if it was a square, like four dots in a square? Or even just so like yeah, off a little bit. I don't know. I don't know, you tell us what you're thinking, Kathleen. Because I saw another Let's face. Uh, Miriam's asking about animations. Yes, you can now use a feature in Adobe XD called Auto Animate. And essentially what it does is you can create an object or a shape or a line or whatever in one artboard and then change it in the next one and then connect them with an auto animate feature, and then XD will interpret that change and animate it. Is that yeah. good explanation? Yeah. Yep. So you don't actually have to know about keyframes and animating programs. You just have to know how you want the movement to look, and you have to get a little bit creative. Yeah, um, we could try just something really quick, um, just to just to try it. Mohammed says remove all the dots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, I suppose that's one option. Um, and somebody was asking, let me make sure I get your name right. Um, Servando is asking how to see all of the submitted challenges. Uh, right now, they're actually all in a, on a private form that's not publicly available. But we're working on something that will make it so there's a public gallery for the prototypes that are shared with us. So hopefully soon we'll have something for you to actually look at them and play with them. Spider peanut, man. <laughs> okay, we got a question for you again. Sure. Do you find it harder for people that are younger to find jobs or work than older people? To me personally, creative, creativity and logical minds can make anything <clears throat> uh, that they set their mind to. So I guess Colin's asking if it's easier to find work if you're younger than if you're older. Have you read um, that? I don't know how much I don't know how much I can really speak to that. Um, I would like to think that it's more based on your ability and mm -hmm. you as a person rather than like, I, I, just, I don't feel like age really makes a difference. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, I, I know I, that's maybe not the case everywhere, but. And I think professionally we work with people across the board yeah. in terms of ages. So I don't see that necessarily, but there could be in terms of, I know, at least for my parents, they like to see technology as this this hurdle that they don't know how to like navigate or overcome when it's just, it's really not, but they've kind of inflated the problem in their minds. They feel like, oh, technology is is for your generation. So I think sometimes there's, there's that disconnect, sure. but it doesn't have to be there. Um, just so everybody knows, we've reached our challenge deadline. Um, if you submit something from here on out, we'll review it in the next stream. So to answer your question, Eric, yes, please share your challenge in the next stream with Howard and Mike. 
Uh, we're gonna give it a couple minutes to make sure that everything settles correctly on our end and we're able to review your prototypes and then we'll jump into them. You think that's sufficient? Yeah. Kind of like scary, that. a little scary, really scary. Maybe if you, something you could do on the last one is add like fangs or something. Like something that's oh, like. Oh, sure. You know, like really something you don't want to mess with. <laughs> like I would, I don't want to mess with that. You're creating your own nightmare here. Yeah, that's, you realize. I'm just helping you out <laughs> <laughs> at my own mental expense. Okay, let me make sure I have them all opened up. Okay, got them pulled up and ready to go whenever you're ready. We'll go ahead and review the challenges that were submitted during our stream. Then Howard will review the rest of them that are submitted before their last deadline of today. And then right after our last stream, we'll select a winner. We'll message them on Behance privately. And then tomorrow morning, we'll announce it publicly what our winning design was. Cool. So whenever you're ready, there's yeah. no rush. I do like, I like the kind of like teeth. I don't know. Yeah, I think that helps. Vampire clown. You would know. You would know if that's scary. It's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> Take them away. <laughs> okay, cool. So we're in here. Uh, the first design that was shared with us. Oh, I, I, I did a, a bad move and I didn't write down who did what design. So if this was your design, throw some hype in chat and let us know it was you. Um, but I, actually, let's let's click through it. Like let's pretend it's a real app and see how it works. So. Oh, it was cool. our first stream, our first screen splash screen. I don't see, I'm gonna actually do something real quick. I'm gonna go out of full screen so that we can see the arrows in case I sure. miss an interaction. So let's go back. So the first screen, it looks like the entire artboard's a hitbox. I think it just takes you no yep. matter where you click. But I like this, I think it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's a cool image. Yeah. And then it looks like we're in just like the menu. Sure. Like the little burger icon up there. That looks nice. Hamburger menu. Yeah, right? It, lo it looks like that could be a hamburger menu. I don't know for sure, but I click on it. <laughs> <laughs> I like down here, how you've got delivery offers in profile. It's pretty simple. Yep. Um, to where you have your home menu, but then you can also choose for delivery or not. Yeah, I think it's a good way too that you've got it broken up. Like you've got wide rectangle image up top, you can still see the next one, um, so that you know kind of tells the user there's something else there to look at. And then you've got the smaller squares for new burgers, and then combos or circles, so you've kind of got you know that visual mm -hmm. repetition. I think that's a good call. Yeah, I really like the screen design. Um, oh, sorry. Let's let's actually click through it and see. Okay, so the entire thing's cool. a hitbox. Super burger. Looks pretty tasty. Nice. I'm hungry. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about you. I don't know if they can hear it, but my stomach's like been growling this whole time. I feel like this challenge <laughs> is just torture for us because we can't eat. Maybe that's, yeah, <laughs> n yeah, now I'm just looking at food. Um, I, th I think this is nice. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good idea. Like, I think it's a really good way that like you broke up the space at the top. Like, a lot of times there's a temptation to try to like shove more together, um, but like it breathes nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got you know a carousel of, of the burgers to, to look through or, or the images of that burger would be my guess mm -hmm. um, so yeah I think it's yeah it's cool yeah I feel like this that wouldn't be too hard to animate that experience yeah right um, and it could be super cool so maybe if you do want to play with this more you could even build off of this prototype but I think this is a great start yeah definitely and so, gradients are always fun to play with yeah I like how the gradient plays off the color of the burger yeah exactly it's really yeah really nice Cause, yeah, I was gonna say I think it'd be hard to uh, to find a gradient that works with food, mm -hmm. like with those images, just because usually the gradients are like bright and cheerful, and um, yeah, I just think it would be a hard 
contrast between the image, but I think this actually is pretty good. Yeah, I agree. So that'd be hard. It's, uh, that's the burger bun gradient. Yeah, yeah, there you patented go. Patented by Alexander. All right, so <laughs> next up we've got Christoph, who designed this for us. Um, and what's nice is, actually, I didn't mention this, but Alexander did the same thing. These icons are from the I an icon kit that we provided awesome. to them, and we asked them to use some of those icons in their Very experience. Very cool. So Christoph did the same thing. Um, I think Christoph was relying on some animations, so we'll have to probably yeah, imagine yep. here that they exist. Sure. So we know we need to click on the burger. I can imagine how that would work. Yeah. Yep. So you've got the expand and collapse. Nice, yep. So we clicked on burger back. It looks like, are there multiple hitbox? Oh, okay. So I think this takes us back. But if you click on this, wait, let's see here. So this would be an example where there... you know, customize your burgers the next one. There you go. But yep. having the hitboxes right next to it make it hard for us to know where to right. click. Right, yep. Um, all right. I like that idea. That's yep. kind of cool. A cool way to represent, like, yeah, building the burger. Super um, simple, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fun. So let's click on this. Nice. Got some tomatoes in there, some cheese, salad, or lettuce. Very nice. Yeah, order. I think that's a cool idea. Like, I don't know that I've necessarily seen seen something like that. It's just uh, that makes sense. Christoph, that that's good. very nice. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed. I think that's super clean and minimal and very nice. Yeah, yeah. I think the maybe the one thing that I would play around with is the colors of your icons. The colors are nice, but they don't necessarily feel like colors you would typically find in, in like a food app. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can maybe even standardize uh, the color just because the icons themselves are so different Yeah. Um, that you might you might be okay getting away with just a, a single color. But mm -hmm. yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Thanks for sharing your work with us, Christoph. Uh, we'll go on to our next prototype, which was designed by, I don't remember who did this one. But if you did it, say your name in chat, or <laughs> Tim, Tim will tell us at some point. Um, but yeah, so let, actually let's go ahead and do the same thing I did last time. I really appreciate the full screen prototypes, but I want to make sure I get to all your artboards. So I'm just taking it out of full screen. Okay, so I don't see any hit boxes clicking. So I'm just going to use the arrow. Okay, cool. Oh. So this is like an overlay, right? Sure. It's like a yeah, summary shopping cart type of thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe this would be what if you click on the hamburger menu, what comes up? Or maybe if you click uh, megabytes. Let's see. Hmm. I wonder what. Maybe I wonder. It's this. Well, I wonder oh, if uh, it's really tiny hitbox. It is the hamburger menu. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. Boom. Yeah. The um, only comment there is maybe uh, think about trying a, a different icon, just because uh, um, the hamburger menu. I would have assumed that maybe it was lead to more navigation mm -hmm. rather than uh, a cart, but. Um, I think the way that you've handled it though is is pretty simple and clever. I like the little pattern in the background too there, mm -hmm. um, just to break it up so it's not just a solid color. I think that's a nice touch too. And it looks like the pattern's actually a bit of a gradient. Like it starts off stronger yeah. there and then fades away at the top. Yeah, yeah. so it doesn't compete nice. with the text either. So yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. So we're gonna proceed to checkout. Make sure everything looks good. Take your credit card information and your address <laughs> for the world to see. No, I'm glad you did it this way. Um, and then we place our order. Wow. It's pretty clean, right? That's a lot of work. Like yeah. all those screens, like that's, there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of work. That's really impressive. Well done. Um, I think Daniel did this. Yeah, Daniel did this. Cool. Awesome. Daniel. Yeah, it looks really good. Really good job. Yeah. Did you see the, it looks like, in the, yeah, the next one. He's got little bites taken out of bites, oh. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> nice little touch there. Clever. Nice job, Daniel. Yeah, very cool. Okay, we're gonna move to our next one. Um, I want to eat fried egg. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really good. <laughs> I could use this app right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you want, surprise me or pizza? Ooh, let's, do, let's try surprise me. Surprise me. Oh. Wow. Tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> Pizza. Pe of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. You got us. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so fun. Okay. Really good idea. I'm going to try too. it again and see if it 
Okay, it looks like we probably yeah, get pizza yeah. every time. I'm okay with that, though. I Pizza's like pizza. good every time. It is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to order our pizza. Wow. I'm sure the pizza sounds great. Uh, yeah, mushroom pizza. Which one do you want? I'm not a fan of mushroom, so I'll get Prosciutto. The, yeah. All right. Mushroom it is. <laughs> 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 All right. I don't want to pay, but I have to pay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Pay with cash. Thank you. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me know if I missed anything in here. I That's think, very cool. I feel like this is Claudia's. I'm pretty sure this is Claudia's and you did a fantastic job. She shared a video with us. So actually I'm going to switch to your computer real quick. And I want to see if her video is in here. All right, I got it, Claudia. We're gonna we're gonna watch the video you shared with us because it looks like she animated it. Oh, yeah. I thought there's quite a bit there already. Oh, cool. Nice. This is cool. That is nice. Well, this is something you can you can export this from XD, which is very cool. Nice. She's got scroll. Yeah. Right there. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Flies in. Yeah. I am, well, I'm very done. impressed, Claudia. That is super. Yeah. Nice work. Like this, they did, like, did you really do that all in this, like, hour and a half? I'm telling like, you, we've got impressive. ringers. <laughs> we've got some ringers. Yeah. All of these are so good. It's going to be really tough to choose the winner. I'm just going to say that now. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for sharing the video with us and your prototype. You did a great job. Um, and next up, we've got one by the one, the only, Tim Mobeast. So I like different, different, uh, it's cool to see that on an Apple watch. I think Tim also animated this, so we're gonna have to get, okay. use our imagination. Okay. Yum. Hungry? Yes, I am. Yeah. Pizza. No, no. Everybody loves pizza. Of course. Scroll down to order some pizza. How hungry? Oh, so there is a scroll here. That's cool. Uh, he's got me with the last one. Exactly. All the pizza. Yeah, he knows us. Now! <laughs> <laughs> order now, yeah. No, nope. I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. I, okay. In the last question, I said, order pizza now. And then in between now and then, I said, nope. Yeah. I don't want pizza <laughs> anymore. <laughs> that's so good. All done. Delicious food. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, nice. nice. Got a little pizza loader. Dude. I don't know if you heard that, but my stomach just growled. It actually did. Yeah. <laughs> the pizza loader got him. <laughs> that's so good. Tim, I'm impressed. What What can you not do? Tim can illustrate, paint, work with amazing sound effects, work with video, and now he can create apps. Clearly has an effect, effect on me. You're very talented, and we're very hungry. Definitely. That was a nice, very nice prototype. Thanks yeah, for sharing super, it with us, Tim. Yeah, joking aside, I'm, it really is impressive to see like yeah. how much people, one, get done, but like, I don't know, just the yeah. ideas are cool too. Yeah, it's super cool, and it actually looks like what Tim did is he he timed the artboards to move automatically so that okay. it still looks like it's animated even though you can't export auto sure. animation. So that's actually really Very, super clever yeah, workaround. Yeah, definitely. That I didn't even think about. So great job, Tim. All right, and last up, we've got Osama who joined us about halfway through the stream. Um, we're glad you're here. And this it looks like good. we have a video here. Yeah, it looks like we have. I want to make sure that I get thing there we go so, yeah yeah okay so he took a video the same way that Claudia sure. did it's really cool that you can do that too I know right and I like how it shows your your uh, cursor so it shows like, yeah. where you're tapping yep nice very yeah, good I like the carousel a lot yep. I think it's neat wow very cool <laughs> but, yeah I like wow. too that the he's got the the background um, like at the very beginning like switching between them like the background like moves just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's it's subtle, but it's a uh, yeah like right there. Yeah, um, it's subtle, but it's kind of a, a nice little touch. Yeah, I think that's a good example we're talking about in terms of thinking thinking in terms of animation. You know, yeah. like maybe adjusting the shadows or adjusting the background when things move so that it feels more real. I think is it. That's a yeah. pretty good approach. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Very cool. Osama also Man. participates in our daily challenges for XD. So cool. I mean, 
he's already a great designer, but hopefully those have helped him be become an even better one. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Tim says the first list is scrollable. I'll make sure I get back to it, Tim. Okay, so yum. Oh my gosh, okay. So we had some options. We had desserts, oh, pizza. Tacos, tacos. <laughs> tacos, tacos. <laughs> Drinks. <laughs> And plants and company, <laughs> all the way at the bottom. Yeah, that's where I'd put that. Yeah. Like, yeah, put that as after far the away pizza from pizza as possible. And, yeah. <laughs> Nom, nice pie chart. Nice job. For the pizza, how hungry you are. Nice. Well, yeah. fantastic job, everybody. Um, we are very impressed by your designs. I just hit a button over here, and I think I broke something. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm breaking the system. Uh, but please, if you're still designing, share it again uh, or share it for the first time with us in the next stream sometime before 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. They'll review them right at the end of the next stream, and then we'll pick a winner right after the stream is over. I know, I agree, Kathleen. What can't Tim do? But I'm honestly, I'm like thoroughly impressed with every single one of those prototypes. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Like like, it's just, I think it just goes to show, like, how much you can do in XD now, mm -hmm. like, with the auto anime and, like, how much easier it makes that. It's yeah. just a lot more accessible and, uh, yeah, just gives everyone a lot more uh, just opportunities and ability to mm -hmm. explore things that maybe they weren't able to before. I also really like how the tool itself isn't super hard to learn. So that allows you to yeah. get creative and fun with your designs. Yeah. And you're not hung up on actually, how do I do this thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's not so technical, but you still got a lot of freedom with, with what you're able to do. Yeah. Totally. All right. So with the rest of the time, let's get back into yeah. your design. Don't want to derail you too much. No problem. Uh, okay. So we've got, oh, I need one other one I know that I want to do. So I want a little icon for the limited treats. So we'll find a, some sort of, oh, that looks like, I like that one. Yeah, that's good. I don't think I've even seen that one before. It's very like candy. That. It's very candy. Leif, to answer your question really quickly about the drag feature, you can think about the drag feature in the same way that you think about the click feature to like cause the transition to happen from one artboard to the next. It's just the, the input that's required to cause the action. Instead of just being a click, you actually can physically do a drag. That's how I understand it, at least. Evan can chime in if. Yeah, no, I think that, yeah, that sounds right. And and we can we can go through some of that uh, more tomorrow, too, yeah. and try to, try to showcase that and explain it a little bit easier. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, we're going to get through a lot of the, the drag features and animation and prototyping tips tomorrow when Evan takes the artboards that he designs today and actually prototypes them into an experience. Yeah. Yeah, we may have to pull some baking magic um, just for the sake of, of, of trying to get through all of these uh, so that we can get to that point. But um, mm -hmm. So I may have to work, work some off screen uh, after this to try to finish some of these up. Um, but we'll recap uh, and summarize so that we're in, in good shape for tomorrow so awesome. that we can really focus on animating and, and prototyping and, and just kind of playing around. Mm -hmm. Right on. And we have about five minutes, so we can see, you know, what, I know it's not a lot of time, but we should be able to put some things in place. Yep. And Daniel asks when the winner is going to be chosen and what the prize is. Uh, the winner will be chosen right after our last stream today which is at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And the prize is a one-year subscription to Creative Cloud. So you should definitely enter. I know you already have, but if somebody's watching and they haven't, you should try out the challenge. The deadline's 2.30 today. So the deadline is 30 minutes before the end of the next stream. And this gives us time to make sure we can review it on the stream and make sure that it's with, grouped in with the rest of the designs that can be considered. Looks like my half-baked response for how to use the drag feature worked for Leif. Nice. I'm glad it works. That is awesome. Okay, so like I said, a bit of a rabbit trail to get here, but for this icon, um, 
I know I want to represent these. Um, and just because it is a Halloween app, like I'm, I'm basically going to convert this into the same style as these, uh, just so that there's consistency between all of them, um, but then also that it reflects some of the actual ones that, that we'll be using too. So, awesome. um, yeah. So you took Phil off, you made it Yep, made it a border. Yep, yep, made it a border, and then I'm just gonna copy this one, mm -hmm. and then if we select this stroke and we do Option Command V, it will make it the same color and size, so that we know that those are are the same. Yeah, and that's we a can great do trick. The same for these. Oh, that one's not gonna work though, because that's text. Oh right. But luckily, you have your colors in your asset panel. Yes. You're able to just click. Yeah. On. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if, if that's how a lot of people use asset, if they just kind of reference it when they need it, but I, think um, yeah. I just think that, that works really well. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the major use cases for it. Hey, Christian. Thanks for joining us from Brazil. Hello from San Francisco. Thanks for watching the stream. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up the stream that's live right now in about two to three minutes, but don't go anywhere. We'll be up again right after that in five more minutes with Mike and Howard. So if you're just joining, don't worry. You're just in time for the next stream. And you can always catch the replay for any of these streams on the replay tab right above the player on behance.net slash live. And no problem, Anel. Hopefully you have a good work day tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll actually be doing portfolio reviews instead of a challenge. So if you have a portfolio that you'd like us to review, now is a good time to start updating it and making sure that you have the projects in there that you would like to be reviewed so that you can share it with us tomorrow and have the chance to get some feedback. Working furiously. Yeah, you got this. I'm trying to trying to plow through this stuff. You got it. We've got Michael sitting on on the couch over there. <laughs> he's doing jumping jacks and push ups. In my mind. He's Psy like psyching himself up. He's like hitting a speed bag and there's rocky music playing. <laughs> <laughs> he's ready to rock it. And Christoph, yeah, for sure. If you want to go back into the design that you shared with us in this stream and glam it up, make some edits, especially if you want to add some extra designs and experiences, you can reshare it again in the next stream and then we'll review it again. Um, and then whatever's shared then before 2.30 two, before would then be your, your entry for the challenge. So feel free to keep working. And Selvam, um, to see past challenge winners, uh, we have some galleries when we've used Woobox in the past, but we don't have a collection of all of the past challenge winners, although a lot of them do create projects on Behance. So if you were to search for Adobe Live Challenge or something similar on Behance, you would probably find a number of the challenge designs actually shared as projects on those viewers' profiles. So that's a good way to peruse some of them. You're doing great, Evan. Thank you. You're a pro. I'm trying. I know that I've got a yeah, lot to try to get through. Um, so like I said, we'll, we'll probably have to pull some baking magic mm -hmm. uh, and pull some stuff out. But um, yep. yeah. Wherever Evan starts tomorrow, we'll probably be a little bit ahead of now, but we'll catch you up to speed if you come back and watch that. But for now, it's about time to sign off, Evan. Sounds good. So we want to like give an indication real quickly about what your plan is yep, for tomorrow? Yep, yep. Uh, so uh, again, here's the, the screens. We started uh, kind of plowing through some of these wireframes. Uh, I'll continue to, to, to work on those and kind of flesh those out. And then tomorrow, the beginning of the stream, we'll just kind of go over those mm -hmm. and then what I did. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of go from there and, and start prototyping and animating and, and playing around there. So I can't wait. Yeah, it'll can't be wait fun. To see what you do. I'm pumped. Yeah. And we're pumped for Mike. He's up next with Howard. So please, if you're watching right now, stick around. We'll be live again in about five minutes. 
Thank you so much for joining, asking us questions, sharing your designs with us. It was yeah, a pleasure today. It's been fun. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Take care. See ya.